Let me highlight some of the most important points. First, this package includes financial sanctions that cut Russia's access to the most important capital markets. We're now targeting 70% of the Russian banking market, but also key state-owned companies, including the field of defense. And these sanctions will increase Russia's borrowing costs, raise inflation, and gradually erode Russia's industrial base. We are also targeting the Russian elite by curbing their deposits so that they cannot hide their money anymore in safe havens in Europe. The second main pillar targets the energy sector, a key economic area which especially benefits the Russian state. Our expert ban will hit the oil by making it impossible for Russia to upgrade its oil refi refineries which gave actually Russia export revenues of 24 billion euros in 2019. The third topic is the ban to, that we ban the sale of all aircraft spare parts and equipment to Russian airlines. This will degrade the key sector of Russia's economy and the country's connectivity. Three quarters of Russia's current commercial air fleets were built in the European Union, the US and Canada and therefore they are massively depending on that. The fourth point is we are limiting Russia's access to crucial technology. We will hit Russia's access to important technologies. It needs to build a prosperous future, such as semiconductors or cutting edge technologies. And finally, on visas, diplomats and related groups and business people will no longer have privileged access to the European Union. First of all, indeed, the one instrument that is being used concerning fossil fuels from Russia is uh, that the instruments are being banned that are crucial to refine the oil. I uh, mentioned the 24 billion euros per year that are the revenues for refined oil. These instruments are um, built in Europe they are unique and cannot be replaced globally by other suppliers. So we will see that over time there will be a depletion of revenues from uh, the refined oil. No chance anymore for Russia to refine oil and then send, uh, sell it. On a second uh, sheet of paper, we have to look at the fact um, that we are indeed today too dependent of Russian fossil fuels. Russia has proven, Gazprom has proven, not to be a reliable supplier. And um, we have to do everything to reduce this dependency of Russian gas, oil, and coal. And indeed, at the moment being, we have been working hard in the last weeks to come to a, state, a stage where we are able to say today, for this winter, we would have enough supplies of gas from elsewhere, LNG gas, from reliable suppliers, in case that President Putin would completely decouple us from Russian gas. But this is the short term. And indeed, in the mid and long term, we have to develop a clear strategy with these bad experiences over the last year. We have to develop a clear strategy how to get completely independent of Russian fossil fuel. One of the solutions is indeed if I look at the gas sector, to work with the suppliers for LNG gas, it has the advantage that we have the terminals, we have the pipeline network all over the European Union, so from wherever the LNG gas is landing, it can be brought, transported uh, to every different part of the European Union, but it also has a second big advantage. This whole infrastructure can be used over time for green hydrogen. We do not have to build a new infrastructure, but we can use all these pipelines. So the motto is get rid of the dependency of Russian gas and go deep into the renewables, and this will be our new strategy we have to intensify.